Hello and welcome to another video here on the Mad Pony YouTube channel. Today I come with exciting news. I'm very excited to show you guys my first pip package, the Mad Cute Pip Package. This is a package that I created to ease the process of using the PyCute framework with Python. We all know that PyCute has some strange ways to handle things, especially because it was created for C++ and we are Python developers. So we want to use PyCute in a more Pythonic way. And that's one of the reasons I am creating this package. Now, at the moment, uh, I just wanted to release it. So what I did is I focused on the MadCute project manager and that's where, where uh, my efforts have been on the last two weeks. And I got a lot of tools and widgets and stuff that I've got planned for us uh, as we go along with these tutorials to make our lives easier using the MadCute pip package. But for today, I'm going to focus on the project manager because it's the, the only thing that is actually finished, properly finished. And we're going to see what, what it can do for us. So what you're seeing here, the, the PyPI web page for MadCute. And as you can see, it's 0010. You can visit the home page, which will take you to uh, the Mad Pony Interactive GitHub page, where you can follow the project along. Here in the discussions, I, I invite you guys to come here and come here to the discussion of the project manager and talk about what do you wish that you would like to see in, in future versions or what you would like to change in the project manager. It's the alpha version, so if you come up with some bugs, you can either go to discussions and tell me about it, or you come here to issues and you open up an issue and you tell me about it, please. If you want to be part of this project, let me know. PM me or whatever here. And uh, let's get started by installing the pip package and learning how we can use the application. Okay, so here's our usual version check. Soon we'll have that version check as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to be using Terminus inside of Sublime Text. If you don't know what Terminus is, I'm going to leave a link in the description below so we can install it. But Terminus is basically you can run a command line here inside of uh, Sublime Text. So if you don't want to use Terminus, you can just uh, do this in a normal terminal window in a normal uh, command line. So I'm gonna say pip install matcute and it will in install the latest version. At the moment it's at uh, version 0018 alpha version 18 basically and um, one thing that I should mention is it's, it's going to look if you have Py uh, installer in your system. If it doesn't it will install uh, 4.7 and it will also install PySite 6 uh, over version 6. Why? Because uh, PyCute, uh, PyCute 6 doesn't bring a um, RCC com uh, compiler for QRC files. So that's why uh, I made Py6, uh, PySite 6 um, a requirement. It also installs the Pillow image library uh, over uh, version 8.3. So you should keep the, those things in mind. So now that we have that installed, we can run uh, the manager by calling MadCute Project ProjectManager. And first thing I, I, I like to say is, if you go to Settings, you'll notice that um, we have Create Executable version here. Uh, might as well, I uh, might as well go, go through this. Cute Designer, this is just the path for your PySite 6, the path for where your Cute Designer is. And uh, the first time you run it, it's going to have something in here already, which is the path for PySite 6. And it will use the Qt Designer in that path. If you want to use another one, you can press here and select a different folder where the, the other Qt Designer is. And you can use that instead. You can also uh, set up your Sublime Text path here, if you're using Sublime Text, so that some of the files that have code will open automatically in, in Sublime Text. And we have a little option up here that creates um, that all, uh, that will create a project, a Sublime project for each project that you create in the MadCute Project Manager. So because I don't want to keep going to a command line to run Project Manager, I'm going to choose this option here and create an executable version. And for now, I'll just choose my desktop and select folder. Uh, you can make it as one file. Uh, here are the arguments for PyInstaller. 
and here you can go to the PyInstaller website by pressing this button and checking out what other options you have uh, but I like it to keep it in a folder because in a folder it's faster it runs faster so I'm gonna let it do that okay now it finished and it tells me output files located at desktop project manager and I can close this guy here I'm not gonna need it anymore uh, if you run into any problems you can uh, obviously run it from the command line okay so here we have it he created a little folder for us and in that folder we got the matcute uh, project manager so in here you just gotta look for the executable run that create a shortcut to it wherever you like and we're set to go so the first thing i want to do is because i use sublime text i'm gonna choose uh, the path to sublime text where i have it installed and because uh okay so I am using Sublime Text 4, uh, but the last few installations they kept installing inside the Sublime Text 3 for some reason. Uh, so I'm going to select that folder here, and now uh, Sublime is in my path, so I'll, I'll have some other options uh, when opening files, like going to the right line of where the module is, and well, we'll get, we'll get to it in a second. Okay, now that I'm uh, in the start page, I can start by creating a new project. I'm going to call it the birth project. I'm going to select the folder and it's important to refer that you should create a folder for your projects so I'm going to say this because it's not going to create a folder for you it's just going to dump everything inside the folder that you choose so this is the bird project folder here and I'll select that and I'll say my files go in here okay so um, and now I got my bird project there so icon, uh, if you don't choose an icon, it's going to have the Matt Pony logo. You probably don't want that. So I'm going to choose a, an icon from my desktop and I'm going to choose my bird here and say open. Now my bird, that image is in PNG mode. And what just happened by selecting it, it created, it transformed that image into a ICO, a .ICO file. So that uh, when we create an executable from our app, that ICO file is going to be uh, used as the app icon. So I'm gonna create that project and the first thing uh, we're presented with is the image page and uh, it created a resource file for us, a QRC file and a prefix called icons and we placed our icon in, in, in there and called it logo icon. Before we talk more about the image uh, uh, page uh, we can click on this open folder here and this is going to open up the the project folder and I just wanted you to see what we have here already and we have um, a JSON file it's basically a JSON file it's a MQP uh, project Magin manager file and it only only has the settings and what's what's uh, what's a part part of the project I can open it up for you so that's the name of the project, the folder where the project is, uh, the date it was uh, created, and uh, the resources, the resource files and all that stuff. And your uh, Python stuff and PyQt stuff is going to be in this dev folder here. Main is the file, uh, the main file that the app is going to use to create the installer. And inside the widgets you'll have your custom widgets, we'll see that in a minute. And inside the graphical user interface, UE, you'll have all your images, resources, and UIs. You probably won't need to come here at any point because you can, can go to any script um, within your application. Apart, obviously, from your main script. That's the only reason you can uh, like go into the dev folder uh, for. You also have this Save As button and uh, you can you can see here on the tooltip it, it tells you what what's what save project to new folder so uh, remember this is an alpha version uh, there's no undo system uh, there's only a restore for images when you tint or when you choose right click on an image and you can tint or multiply and then you can restore them to whatever they were before so i can show you really quickly the example Let's tint this image with uh, green, for example, here. You can see that tint just made it green. So if I choose to restore now and bring it back, and I try multiply, 
with the same color now you can see it, it made it green uh, greenish it didn't it just multiplied it even just made it green <laughs> also my logo is smaller now this is something I gotta fix uh, when I release this video I'll probably release that fix on the on version 19 and when you install you'll get version 19 so if you want to save as um, I'm gonna restore this just a second why the tint is useful uh, let me see I can right click on the resource file and say I'm gonna add a prefix I'm gonna say uh, images into this prefix press ok and I can drop images in here let's let's drop these two images in here okay now we got two these two images there have been just copied from their location into our project and I'm also gonna drop some icons in here so that we we can see what uh, okay why do we have tint and multiply so if I choose to multiply these guys by green now I got all my icons as green and multiply uh, usually works better than than tint but you can try tint for example in this image if I just wanted to this is um, as you can see as transparency it if I use tint it everything goes away so but if I use multiply I'll keep uh, the graphics in there uh, you also have this slider here that will make the images bigger up to 256 pixels but it only gets it as big as they are so you can see that this image didn't went bigger than what it uh, what is maximum size was but this one did because it's a big image we just restore that so you you can see better here if I do that to this guy okay and I can restore it I can also rename images delete images etc I cannot reorder uh, the image uh, location so if I try to grab it and place it inside the icons I can't do that at least not in this version uh, but what I can do is grab an image and drop it in Photoshop for example as you can see it's written down there another cool feature feature is that I can transform any of these images if I if I go down to start right now you can see that that's my icon for my project uh, but if I go back to project here I can transform any one of these images into uh, an icon I should be able to do that yeah it's another bug that I need to fix so uh, a quick fix right now is just to reopen project manager and I'm, I'm just so that I don't have to do this I'm gonna drag this here hold alt so that I can create a shortcut and I don't need I don't need to look at that folder anymore I'll place it somewhere else okay now if I open it up again and open my project I should have yes set as project eco or uh, transform an, a PNG into an ICO let's transform this guy into an ICO so it creates an ICO the, down here and now because this is an ICO I can set this as a project icon and if I go back to my start page you can see that now that's my icon I don't want that so I'm gonna go and set this one as a project icon it's important that you create your structure structure uh, before you let me just bring this up before you um, your image structure and that deletes the image as well when we delete that uh, here in the resources uh, uh, create your image structure before you start creating UIs because as soon as you start creating UIs this resource file is gonna be added to any UI you create or drop in the UI files uh, section and if for example I'm working on a UI and I uh, add an image there uh, it's gonna point to resources icons and that image that I selected so if I come back here and I now change icons and rename this to be something else I even get the warning telling me about it rename this to something else cute designer won't find that image anymore and I have to update the paths so it's important that you create your prefixes right away how you want it usually icons and images is probably all you're going to need if your project is going to be very intense going to have a lot of images you might want to create another resource file and drop it in here you can drop a resource file in here um, or add QRC by right clicking selecting out QRC another QRC file you can't create new QRC files here yet 
uh, maybe in future versions uh, yeah that's it for images I am writing all these bugs as I go along and also what to implement next so don't worry about that we'll fix that before we move on to the UIs and custom widgets I would like to talk about this button here and it is uh, open sublime uh, project button so if I press it the first time I press it it's gonna give me this message telling me um, to save to that it's gonna create go open up a new window in sublime text we and it's gonna add that folder to it and it's uh, telling me to copy this uh, path which is a path for my my project and then to go to project save project as in sublime text so if I press OK it's gonna open up a, a window for me and it's opening up my previous project as well but uh, this is the new window that I open up for me and you can see that my bird project is in there and I have my main here which has some code and some information I don't have documentation uh, ready yet uh, but we'll go so uh, we go through the information that we have here uh, in a second so what it's telling me is just to go to project once this opens and save project as and save it into that folder that it gave it me so I'm just uh, I just I did a paste I did a paste up here press enter and I'm gonna save it here my bird project so I'm saving I'm basically saving um, here we go and it showed up sublime project so if I press F2 now I can go to my bird project at any moment and if I close that and close this other project that I had open here every time now I press this button it will open up my close that one first it will open up my project like so okay because I had two projects open uh, it kept opening those two projects so I have to close that one and then this one and and we got it okay so I got my project ready I can come here anytime I want to my main and do my changes and this also opens up some possibilities for me when I'm working with widgets and we'll see that in a second so let's start with UI I'm gonna create a new UI here and uh, you can for now you have Q widget and Q main window so you probably want a Q main window for your main uh, UI window and then maybe add some widget UIs to to add to that so I'm gonna leave it as main window and uh, why because if I open up my project you can see that it's using main window here uh, I'll go over this in a second but if we leave it like that as main window we can straight away run our app okay if you change it to some other name uh, it's not gonna run the app because it's gonna look for that name as main window so here we got our UI and you can see we can double click to open Q Designer a uh, new window for QDesigner with this UI in there or we can click drag it uh, into QDesigner so because my QDesigner is closed at the moment I'll just double click this to open QDesigner and it opens up with my window right here so I'll just make this a bit smaller so we can uh, see both the applications here so as you can see it's just a default uh, window main window uh, it's got the window title here I can change my window title to be my bird my bird app and uh, if I want my icon to show up I'm gonna I need to use the to set up uh, the weekend I uh, the window icon here uh, if I look into resources and if I go back here into resources you can see that all the resources all the images are available in this new UI that we created and any, any UI that we create is going to point to the, the resources that we have in here. So that's handy and it's uh, straight out of the bat available for us. So I'm going to choose a resource here and I'm going to choose that uh, ICO to be uh, my window thing. So because I did the change here, I'm going to control S here on my UI. So it's important to refer that every time I make changes outside of uh, the, the project manager, I should, when I come back to the project manager, press refresh to refresh the files, and then I can press run. And now you can see that my bird app changed the uh, size, the window changed size because I changed it in QDesigner. Uh, the name changed and the icon shows up in there. 
I'm gonna go ahead and create a new uh, another UI here and this time I'm gonna choose Q widget just so that we can see how we can use uh, different UIs inside of our project uh, I want to call that these these new UI from um, in main as a widget so I'll call it pop-up UI just to make sure to, to make sure I remember that's a UI file and I'll do an underscore there okay that's my pop-up and we'll come back to, to this UI later on but for now I can show you right away if I bring my pop-up you have to select it first before you can drag it by the way uh, now I got a, a widget UI in here and that's gonna be my pop-up and again if I go into resources you can see resources are available for it as well so I'm just gonna change the, the window name here to the window title to my my pop-up I don't need to have it open I come back here and I'll refresh always refresh when you come back from another application you make changes in um, sublime text or you make changes in cute designer you come back you press refresh It's the best option you oh, one thing that I forgot to mention you can actually drop uh, uh, previous UI files in here but be aware that any resources that they have will be cleared and it will add the resources that we have here to the UI and the custom widgets as well it's going to clear all the custom widgets and add the custom widgets that we have here uh, you can also add it like this and you, you can delete UIs by pressing this delete selected so let's go into widgets widgets is uh, basically the same thing you can drop in um, modules that have widgets and I'm actually going to start by doing that so here I got a file that has a few imports and I got a few uh, custom widgets uh, I got a jump button that inherits from Q push button tool button that inherits from Q tool button uh, I got a custom one that is from abstract uh, item view uh, list view and a tree view widget now these one uh, drag and drop that inherits from Q abstract view this is not, I don't think yeah this is not going to pop up because Q abstract view item view is not one of the available classes that you can subclass from as a promoted widget so this is not going to show up in there either way I didn't want it to do that because here I'm, I'm using this just to subclass it from another class so I wanted to, you to see how, how, how this file is before I drag and drop it in there so let's try and drag and drop that file inside uh, of the widgets so I'm gonna grab it from another place there and I'm gonna drop it in there and as soon as I drop it you can see that's the name of my module called mywidgets.py and this is the classes that are compactable and if the classes that I found and that are compactable with the uh, promoted widgets inside of Qt Designer it also copied the file into my project so if I open my project and go into my folder I can see that here in widgets we now have these my widgets uh, file with all the, the stuff and if I go back into the application let me just make this smaller here if uh, for example I click on any one of these classes so I like jump button it goes straight to jump button tool button it goes to tool button tree view okay so that's why uh, the sublime text integration can be quite nice uh, here you can add a class to what you already have here so if I press add class it will bring me to this add class page and I can choose a, a class I want to inherit from let's say I want to inherit uh, from Q toolbar and as soon as I press that it, it gives me a, a class name here called toolbar you can rename this to whatever you like uh, now if you try to start with a lowercase it's gonna turn that lowercase into an uppercase because it need it likes classes with a uppercase we're in Python here I'm gonna just leave it as toolbar and I'm gonna say create this custom widget and now we got the toolbar here and if I double click on it you can see that it appended that to the file and it's ready for us to to code that okay so it appends it like this uh, defining it with args and quarks and a super with args and quarks ready to go so that we can subclass that Q toolbar and do things to it. I can at any point in time do this, save and then come back here, refresh and it's gone. I can also create a new module by 
clicking here in your module you can see that it already comes as my widgets down there uh, because I already have a module called my widgets that I just dragged in there but if I don't have anything here uh, selected let me go and say uh, QWeb web engine widget you can see that uh, as soon as I select a, a, Qt, a Qt class it gives me the preferred name for uh, my custom class and my module I can obviously change this to my uh, web view or whatever my custom class should be called and he renames the the module to have a uh, starting lowercase so he can distinguish between models and classes and there are no conflicts there so if I create this widget now now I have this widget and if I double click on this it will show me what it, what it created for me now the reason why it's not importing from PySide and it's importing from matqt, uh, dot Qt, Qt widgets. Uh, it's because this is, is basically an unwrap a wrapper. If I wanted my app to use uh, PyQt instead of PySight, and this prefers PySight, I could just say import PyQt here. And it, when this wrapper now, it's going to use PyQt instead of PySight. Okay? We'll go over that uh, at later videos. Let's let's look at what happens uh, for what happened with our UIs. I'm just going to close the project for now, and I'm just going to do a refresh to make sure that all of this goes into the UIs. And if I open up my main window UI, for example, and throw it in there, if I now right-click and go to Promoted Widgets, here we are. Here is all the the widgets that we have have available to us that are in these uh, widgets uh, page okay so you can see that these guys all them all these guys are inheriting from my widgets my widgets and this web view guy is inheriting from my web view module which is this guy right here okay and it's saying it's telling me that it's inheriting from q widget that's probably because q uh, web engine view is not really not implemented in uh, Qt Designer yet. The last time I checked, they were still implementing it uh, coming from PyQt uh, 6, so maybe it's not fully implemented just yet. Okay, so and yes, this is going to be available for all UIs that you create, so all the, the widgets are going to be available there. So basically, I don't think you know, I need to do this for you to know, but I'll do it anyway. If I now add a uh, push button I think what we have here is Q push button you can use the jump button here and I put push button here and right click I can now promote to a jump button and this becomes a jump button instead and it will obviously get all that functionality inherited so if I save my UI here by con control s I just did a control s there I come back to my application I refresh hope and uh, now I'll try to run it it seems that it doesn't. Oh, oh, yeah, it doesn't work because I'm using Q Web Engine View, and MatQt uh, framework doesn't have a, a wrapper for. Um, let me just open this up. It doesn't have a wrapper for uh, Qt Web Engines, Qt Web Engines widgets. Okay, it will have in the future. So if you want to implement a Q Web Engine View, you'll have to manually go into inside your module and paste this code in. Uh, uh, PyQt might be f getting Qt web engines from another place, but here we, we use that instead. So with that in there, I should be able to run my app. And here we are, here's our app, uh, now with uh, web engines as well. Now web engines uh, makes the app take longer to, to load, and I would only use it on a separate module. Uh, if I want to do something like um, let the user log in into my website so that he can get a key or something like that and make sure that he's got the credentials to log into my app something like that and that's if you're doing a commercial project obviously uh, one thing that I should mention you cannot like delete even it gives you a message here that it's going to perma permanently delete the module and it's not going to go into a bin folder so be careful about that but even if I say yes, you cannot delete a class, you can only delete modules. So this button is only going to delete selected modules here. 
So I'm going to get rid of that module because that's going to take a long time and uh, I might as well close it in there before I deleted it. Say yes there and now my app should run a lot faster. Yeah. And my jump button has a jump functionality, which is basically I just did uh, the margins to, to expand up. Executable. So the executable is Py installer in, in the background and um, basically you have the, the same thing you had when you created an executable for the project for the project manager and it comes already with a, a name that it give you, gives your project you can edit this out as you see fit place it in one file or remove one file if you want to use a window um, a folder uh, instead uh, so uh, I'm gonna press create executable and that's gonna create an executable and if I open up here my folder structure and it should have, as you can see, creates a build folder as it's executing it. Uh, in future versions, I'm going to let uh, give you an option here if you want to save um, the build uh, folder or not. But at the moment, what it does is, as soon as it's, it finishes creating the executable file, it will delete the build folder and just leave the distribution folder. Okay, as soon as it stops, it comes back down to the top and tells you where it is and we can see that it's in here in this dist, dist folder well it doesn't show up because uh, well, I'm in sublime text but let's open the project folder and if I go into dist here's my bird project and you should have the icon yeah it just popped up so if I now open it up it takes longer to open up uh, one file uh, projects so if you wanna make it faster you remove the, the one file there and here's our app and if I, if I just show you here with the you can see that here on my on my Windows bar, my taskbar, you can see that the icon shows up in here as well. Okay, so to finish up, I'm just gonna uh, we're gonna look at the the file, the main file that we get here, and you can see that the only thing that it does is just imports Q application so that it can run the Q application, and it uses main window as the the window to 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 display. Now you can see that here in main window I got .ui in front of main window and this is how you can import your UIs into your main file. You'd say from graphical user interface which is uh, where all the UIs are import and you say the name of your UI so let me just bring back uh, our UIs here okay so if I wanted to import um, that one uh, pop up I could just uh, add that as well in there so pop up underscore UI like I called it and now it's accessible to me in there as well uh, I might as well do something to this guy so I can distinguish them I'll come back here and I'll close my main window and I'll grab my pop up and place something in here like a label with an image or something like that uh, okay, so now that's accessible. I can I can close this cute designer and I'll just refresh this. At any time, you can also call your your project from here from main. Uh, but for that, I actually I'll add this on the fi on the next uh, release. Import C's. You have to import C's, otherwise it's not going to work. So if I do a Control B here, uh, F7. Uh, here's my UI. I just want to go quickly go over uh, class uh, subclassing, how you can do subclassing here. Uh, something something is already done for you in the background. I, I left some information here. You can read through it. Uh, we have a subclassing example down here. So let me quickly check that out. So to subclass, you can you can do this. Uh, so main window is the name of our UI, and if we do dot UI. Uh, we in in this in here we already have the UI initialized so we can access our UI stuff by saying self dot UI so for example we have our push button which is called push button in our UI so if I just print it out you can see there's my push button is right there uh, this I did uh, I grabbed uh, a button right so we have um, there's a button created here uh, in our modules. We're grab grabbing that button right here. 
So from widgets dot button, which is the name of the module, I'm importing button, which is a class, and now in here I can access that class like that. Okay, and I'm setting the central widget to be that button. Let me quickly do an example here where we actually going to use this pop-up. Okay, so here's an example where how we can use other UIs. Uh, so basically, from GUI, I'm importing the main UI. I'm importing the pop pop up UI, which is that one. Uh, why am I importing button here? I'm actually not using this. Okay. And down here, I'm subclassing main window, which is that UI there. And I say that dot UI. The reason why I say that UI is that now I can and grab all its stuff by saying dot UI here, self UI. It's anything that is inside that UI. And remember, we had the push button, which we didn't name, so the automatic name is going to be push button. So I say that self pop up, creating a variable called self pop up, it's going to be our pop up UI and uh, dot UI. Okay, so by initializing it like that, self pop up is already a UI and available to us. And down here, I am grabbing that push button that we created, and I'm saying that when it's clicked, it will connect to self pop it. And self pop it is this function, uh, this method right here of our class. What it's going to do is it's going to set the visibility of our pop up UI. And what I'm doing here is I'm negating whatever if it's visible or not. So, if, uh, if it's visible, it won't be visible, and if it's not visible, it will be visible. That's why I wrote down here, toggles the UI visibility. And the result will be, we can run it from here, will be that if I push, press this button, my new UI comes up, if I press it again, it goes away. Okay, and I can move them independently, like that, and play around with it. Now I didn't implement something to make the other one disappear, but you can see it's working and we can also run it from here and have the same result. Okay, I close it. All right, I think that's it uh, for this uh, first introduction to the Matcute project manager. I hope it becomes really useful for you guys that, that you guys can get involved in the GitHub page and uh, share your feelings about this. So I guess I'm gonna go to bed because it's half six now and uh, <laughs> it's late. <laughs> uh, hopefully I'll, um, I don't know what will be next, what videos I'm gonna create next, but um, I won't make any promises. <laughs> so I'll see you in the next video guys. Take care.